So we should be live. Well, I think we're live. Well, let Facebook build an audience for us. And if you are on already, shoot something in the comments. Just say hi. Let us know you're here. And you we will. I are my new mug. These are our new mugs. That's beautiful. I like it. That's our new logo. More goldy. See, I have my swag here, too. You can't see the logo on it in the lighting. I know. My my sippy cup swag. Hi, Karen. Karen's here. So great. We've got, we know we've got at least one person listening. That is so cool. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get started. I am so thrilled to be interviewing Dr. Angela Loria here today. Um, Angela, you've done it again with a terrific book. I think I like this one even better than the others. I love this book. My mom said it was her favorite book of mine. It is. And just so everyone knows, Angela just released another book called Make Them Beg to Publish Your Book. So (laughs) perfect. And you wrote this while you were on vacation. I did. I don't, yeah. didn't want to waste any time. You it's did? Sort of, it sort of wrote me. It kind of insisted on being written while I was walking around the Belvedere Museum in Vienna with one of our authors, Nora Ganescu. And Nora was telling me why she started working with us and why she, what she had learned and why she was so grateful that she had been an incubated author. And as she was sharing all of this with me, we're walking around and looking at Klimt. Do you know Gustav Klimt, the guy who did The Kiss? Right. So we're looking at this like beautiful art. And I was so inspired by all of the art at that museum. That night I got on a river river boat. I was taking a river boat cruise. And hey, Susa. And while I was on the boat, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to write a book while I'm on this boat. Oh, no. And it kind of so good. Me. My book snuck up on me and knocked me over the head. This is so good. So mm-hmm. perfect. But what the book is about, I love this because it's a little bit of, no, it's not a little bit. It's an expose of the publishing industry. And what the options are now and what the actual old old school publishing is. Um, You know, and a lot of people in publishing don't even realize what it is because they're, you know, the thing about the frog boiling or like when you're in the water, you don't know how warm or hot it is. So they're thinking like, oh, we need to adapt. We're going to hire a 20 year old to do social media and make Instagram pictures or we're going to add 50 pages to our manual for authors of all the things they should do to promote themselves. Right. They don't realize that we've all moved to a different pond. We're, we're floating down a different river and they just have no idea. They're like, Hey, maybe if we put in this decoration here. Yeah. And this book totally addresses that. It totally addresses why you might want to take a more unique approach to getting a book done. Um, What I didn't realize is how long it can take to have a book released when you go traditional publishing, which, and, you know, I feel like my time of life, I'm not wasting any time. I need to get this stuff done. No, that's someone from the traditional publishing industry, and you ask them how long does it take to publish with you, they would say, oh, it's so much faster. Because they're comparing it to 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. Right. It used to take three years. Now it takes a year and a half. It feels like lightning fast to them. And the rest of us are like a year and a half. It was, I got a lot of clients I'm supposed to be helping between them. I know it. I know it. And that's one of the best lessons you taught me, truly, was when I was afraid to let go of my manuscript and thought, you know, this. I wrote this in. Angela does things where she has you doing your book in 12 weeks, which just is mind blowing. Or three days. You did your first. I did most of the book in three days. We published, I think, was it six weeks later? Yeah. You came August 19th. We published your book October 13th. I was terrified to let go of that manuscript. I was like, wait, 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 wait. I need to polish this. I know things don't flow quite like I want them to. And you said to me, you can hang on to your manuscript for the next two years 
and make it be just pretty perfect for yourself. But think of all the people who are going to become widowed in the next two years, and they don't have your book in their hands to help them. And I kind of went, oh, I never looked at it that way. And I think that is also, it speaks to your publishing company, Difference Press, and in writing a book that makes a difference. Can you kind of share with people the difference between writing the book that they want to write and writing a book that makes a difference? Yeah, well, what people think it's about is, and I, I think our traditional school systems that most of us went to, we were all looking for the teacher to give us an A. So I think everyone's imagining, so totally like subconsciously, that there's some English teacher in the sky who determines good books versus bad books. She's giving out grades. You get an A, you get a B, high sky. And so the English teacher in the sky is going to determine whether your book makes a difference and your book makes a difference based on how good it is. And, you know, if the teacher reads out an ex an excerpt in class, then it's really good. And, you know, if you get mentioned on the wall, you know, then it's really, and, and the thing that actually makes a difference is when your book connects with someone and changes their life. It really doesn't matter. I mean, I love, there's nothing wrong with critical acclaim. In fact, hopefully Karen Anderson is still here. Her book is highly critically acclaimed. Right. Karen is one of the most beautiful writers that we've worked with. If you guys haven't read her book, A Peaceful Daughter's Guide, get that one too. Um, so it is nice to have a critically acclaimed book. I love critically acclaimed books. But if you're not actually helping people, it's not making a difference. You have a critically acclaimed book. Like you could also build a house that wins a builder's award. But if you can't sell it, the house is worth nothing. The house is worth what someone will pay for it. And a book can only make a difference if it gets into people's hands and hearts and actually changes their lives. Like what happens with many of your readers, many of my readers, and many of Karen's readers. More than I ever imagined, Angela. More than I ever imagined. Because... Being a first time writer and, you know, I shared that feeling that I think everybody who's a first time writer feels like you're writing, 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 and you're thinking, oh, this is just terrible. No one's going to read this. This is no good. And the managing editor was saying, this is such a good book. And I'm thinking, oh, she tells that to everybody. <laughs> but then when I put my book out there, when I bit down on all the fear involved in doing that, and I actually put it out there. And the reviews I started getting back and the private emails to me I was getting, I mean, it just blew my mind. The book was changing lives. And I thought, oh, this and I'm sure it could be better. So here's the question. If we made the book 10% better and it took us six more months, how many more people would it actually be helping? Probably not many because people are only buying the book based on the cover the title, the back cover copy, maybe your name. They're not reading the book before they buy it. So if we make the book 10% better, we probably don't change that many lives. And we lose six months of helping people. Because those right. people, right. 5,000 people that this book has found its way into their hands now, and those 5,000 widows would not be helped. By the way, I didn't mention my book that I wrote with Angela is Widowed. Nice oh, I'm very annoyed looking at that. I do not have a copy. No one has sent me one. You don't have a copy of this? And they're supposed to, I didn't know yours were out. They're supposed to send me copies as soon as they're ready. I, you know what? A copy in the mail today, Angela. Oh, thank you. A copy in the mail today to you. I need to hold that. It looks beautiful. It is. I love it. I love the cover. I love all the work that went into it. Um, also tell me, now you told me when I first met you, I met Angela uh, like about a year ago. I can't believe it's only been that long. Um, you said, I don't want someone who already has their entire book written. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. most people are writing their book for the English teacher in the sky. Right. So what they're doing is they're trying to write beautifully. They're trying to organize their book the way their English teacher taught them. They're trying to get an A and it reads like you're trying to get an A. And usually they forget the most important thing, which is connecting from the heart with their best readers. Like we're so many people. This is like 
when I discovered Strengths Finder, have you ever done Strengths Finder? You know, I think I just did that one. Okay, well, I was in my late 30s, I think. I was over 35. And I had spent at least 30 years of my life trying to like fix all the things that were broken about me or subpar. And anything I was really good at, I definitely didn't spend time on because I was good at it. And when I read Strength Finder, the whole thing is let's figure out what you're good at and get really good at it. Like, all right. Well, that's a crazy fucking idea. How did no one think of that? <laughs> that's one way to make it the difference for us. Most people write their book for the lowest amount. So if your book is going to be read by a million people, let's make sure the million, the person who it's going to have the least effect on, let's make sure they like it. I actually don't care about the millionth reader. Read, don't read, do what you want. I care about the number one reader. The reader who your book is going to change their life forever. And we all have, I hope we all have books like that. Books where you're, you've never been the same again after you read that book. Right. And so I talk about my, the book that really changed my life was Brooke Castillo's, If I'm So Smart, Why Can't I Lose Weight? And when I read that book, every single thing in my life changed. My marriage changed, my physical appearance changed, where I lived changed, my house changed, my job changed, my career changed, my bank account changed, my weight changed. Nothing in my life didn't didn't change. Everything in my life did change. So that's who I want you to write the book for. The one person who's going to be like, Joanne is the person I've been waiting for. Right. The last 40 years of my life are going to be the best 40 years. Like I'm going all in to have the most rich and wonderful life. Even though I expected my husband to be here, he's not. I'm going to show him that he gave me the strength and the courage to lead an amazing life even without him. Exactly. That's who we're writing it for. Who cares about some random person who's never going to work with you, who's never going to incorporate any of your ideas. They're going to buy your book and put it on the shelf. We're going to write it for them. Right. And what's amazing is what the book did for my business. And I want to address that a little bit because I know a lot of the people that are here and a lot of the people that will be listening to this on replay are fellow coaches of mine. This is up on my private Facebook page, and I have a lot of coach connections, people who I really love. And I think they probably all have a lot of questions in their mind about, is it worth doing a book for my business? You know, they have maybe a lot of fear around being able to create the book. And will the investment pay off for me if I do a book and I don't go the traditional publishing route with that? Like if I hire a book coach and a book coach, people is not a ghostwriter, um, a book coach. Well, you can hire a ghostwriter. I can yeah. hire. Yeah, I didn't. Angela just ripped this right out of my soul onto paper. It was so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So the difference a book like this can make to your business and getting the people to you that need you. Yeah, so do you have you doubled your business since the book came out? Have I doubled my business? Have I 10 times to my business since the book? Yes, yes, okay. and it, it feels so amazing. And it doesn't feel amazing in a sense of, oh, look at me, I'm taking off, I'm making money in my business. It makes, it feels great in a sense of, wow, look at all these people that I get to reach out and touch and show them exactly how to get out of the stuck place where they are, right? And that's the big thing. You know, you posted something on Facebook. I'm sorry, I'm going totally to left field with this, Angela, but it was so great. You posted something on Facebook about if, if you were $50,000 in debt and you suddenly had $50,000 of surprise money come in, would you pay off all the debt or would you do something else with the money? And I really think the upshot of that is that you invest the money in yourself. And I don't think everyone has to, just to be clear. I think you should do whatever you want with surprise money. Go buy shoes, do whatever you want. It's surprise money. But for me, I always want to be the best investment I'll ever make. I always want to know, I mean, I'd love to know what to do. I might be able to figure out a million dollars, but if $10 million just showed up at my door tomorrow, it would take me like a couple of years to figure out what to do with it. I love the idea of knowing 
hey, at any point, in fact, I, I just signed up to make a $60,000 investment today, and it turns out it's 60000 Canadian. So it's probably 50000 So I love the fact that I know if somebody just handed me $50,000, I know how in five years I could turn that into 500000 I know how I could spend $50,000 and in 90 days turn it into at least 100000 Like It totally changes how you live your life. It does. It does. And 50000 is hard for me to wrap my head around, but I can wrap my head around 5000 That's it. $5,000 showed up. What am I going to do with this money? Am I going to tuck it away in a safe little savings account? Well, a year ago, I probably would have. Right. And now I have such a different view on the world just through doing this process even and understanding it that I know exactly what I would do with that $5,000 and I would make it be $50,000. Right. Right. And like knowing you're that person, it's so cool. It's like, it is oh. so good. It is so good. And I wrote about that too in context of the widows. I do a widow coaches class mm-hmm. and the widows I interview for that class. And often that they will say, well, I have to look at my finances or I don't think I can really, you know, spend that money right now for that. And there's somebody that I know are so perfect for the class and it breaks my heart. Not that they're not taking my class. I know there's going to be another one that comes along and takes my class. But because I feel like they are so missing out by not investing in themselves. Well, I know know what a difference it's going to make. All the ways that's going to affect them. Because if they're not investing here. Change their whole life taking that class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's the same way that, you know, you talk about in your new book, the difference between going traditional publishing route, um, paying to have your book published or working with a mentor to get your book done and investing in getting your book out there is so worth it because it will change your life. It'll change your business. It'll change everything. So here's the thing that makes me sad. I see so many people who have never written a book before. Mm -hmm. They don't have a successful business. They see someone like you put a book out there and see how your business has grown over the past six months, nine months since your book has come out. And they decide they're going to do it themselves. And instead of investing the two months that you invested, they invest a year or two. And then they invest in getting someone to design their website that's all focused around their book. And then they invest in getting somebody to make them business cards. And then they create a whole program to go with their book. And they're spending all this time and all this money to support a book that they don't know is going to work. They write the book that can't make a difference. They write the wrong book. And it drives me so crazy when I see it. I'm like, oh, God, we could have had one phone call. You could have watched one of my free classes. I have a free class at quartermillionbook.com. It's 19 minutes. I like. Fit, I was like, maybe my classes are just too long because they're usually 90 minutes. So I made this one one nine, slightly less than 20 minutes. And you can get it at quartermillionbook.com. And if you actually are thinking about doing a book and you watch that, you will learn what it takes to actually make a difference with your book and not spend all that time and money to have something that is just wasting, wasting your energy and effort when the work that coaches do, I think is so important. Exactly. And by the way, anybody who is on here watching this, if you have any questions for Angela, please get them into the comments. We can take a couple minutes and answer questions. I'm also going to see if I can put a link in here. Can I? Yes. If you're interested in looking at doing a book with Angela, I've put a link up for you to click on to go to the application. Now, Sky says, hey, Angela, I have a question. I will just start working with teenage girl soccer players on confidence mean girls and overcoming adversity on the soccer pitch and in life. I'm putting things together right now to get started. I know I will write a book one day for them. How long would you recommend working with the group before one should write a book? So I would totally recommend doing them at the same time. 
Um, however, if you were going to work with clients before you wrote a book, I would want you to have three good case studies. So it's not how long you work with them. It's really knowing the result you can get. So if you can get a consistent result for three people, um, if your soccer players win more games, or if your soccer players get into more colleges, get into better colleges, I would focus on what's the result that having, because confidence, nobody's paying for confidence. I know you wish they were, but they're not. Um, the reason I say do the book at the same time is because you're going to create the wrong program and it's going to take you two years and I can show you how you can do it in about three months, what's going to take you two years. But go spend two years, especially if you have it. If you're just like, right now I'm in a trial and error period. I might not even like soccer players. I'm not that into it. I don't need the money. I'm just doing this as a fun thing. Then I would say take two or three years, do trial and error, and get the same result for three people. That's my answer, Sky. And if you don't have the time for trial and error, then use a system. I use a system based on a book called, um, are you seeing my camera freak out? My camera just freaked out on me. No, um, good. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I use a book called The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. It's for software companies. But I apply the Lean Startup methodology from software um, to writing a book. So I'd work with somebody who has a system for market validation. So you make sure you don't create a program that's not going to sell. Terrific. Yeah, and I don't think you want to wait any longer than necessary myself. Because no. once you're keyed in on what your people need to hear, get it out there. And a book is the best way to do it. Wait, when are you doing your second book? You're ready to do yours now. I would approve you. I'm close. Yeah, I'm applied. Oh, I'm close. I'm ready. I think it's going to be the widow coach. Yay. I love it. It's yeah. perfect. Approved. Get your form in. Approved. Approved. You all saw it here first. <laughs> that's actually a hard, it probably sounded very easy, but that's most people I say no to, but you're actually ready. So I think so. I I'm think excited. it's fine. So do we have any more questions for Angela before we wrap this up? Your last chance, people. You get to ask anything you want about doing your book. I don't have my copy of my book here because we just, I made a video downstairs, but it's called Make Them Beg to Publish Your Book. You have a nicely written behind you. You guys can definitely go to Amazon and pick up a copy. It, it's available in both ebook and print. And I think the ebook is $3.49 and the print book is $14.95, I think. Um, but if for some reason anybody wants one and they really don't have $3.49 to spend on Amazon, I'm happy to send you a copy. You can just email me. It's Angela at theauthorincubator.com and just let me know and I'll stick a PDF in the mail for you, um, in the email for you if you want to get a copy that way. Fascinating book. Do it, people. This will tell you definitely the difference between traditional publishing and publishing yourself and why you want to do that and possibly why you would want to work with Angela. I, Angela, yeah, I recommend it to everybody. This is the other thing I want to say, too. The reason the book is called Make and Beg to Publish Your Book is most people have a fantasy of what we call a six-figure book advance. They would love to have $250,000 that a publisher pays them to write their book. What they don't realize often is that's their $250,000 paid in advance. So it's sort of like a payday loan. So if your authors are thinking about taking out a payday loan against their paycheck, they will love getting a $250,000 advance because those are the same rates that you pay back that loan with. There is another way you can give yourself an advance of $250,000. And that is why I created the class quartermillionbook.com. If you go to quartermillionbook.com, it will show you exactly how you can make $250,000 from your book directly and not pay those exorbitant loan fees from uh, that the traditional publishers charge. So that uh, quartermillionbook.com is another way to kind of understand how you can make money from your book. Of course, the book will also tell you if you want to get a million-dollar book advance, how to do that. Right. 
Right. So any closing thoughts, Angela, any words of wisdom for those who are feeling like they're in this place of indecision about doing a book for themselves? Um, if they should there, step out and do this to take their epic mission to the next level. Yeah, I think there are two reasons to do a book. One is if you just want to do personal artistic expression, writing a book is an amazing experience to just tell your story. I'm not the right person to work with, but the Iowa Writers Conference, there are writers conferences in Sedona, like just tell your story with no expectations of how it's going to change the world. Do it for yourself. It's awesome. It's a great hobby. I love writing. If you want to change millions of lives, create a business that's a six-figure business, if you want to actually help people and serve as an expert, that's a different art form. And it's not better or worse. There's no judgment on either, but they're different books. And so you can't go to the Iowa Writers Conference or read books on being an artistic writer and expect it's going to generate clients. They're both fantastic. They have similar things. They include typing words onto a screen, but they are very different. And so make sure that your coach that you work with, whether that's free or a YouTube video or someone you pay, but make sure they've gotten the exact outcome you want. So if you want clients begging to work with you, then make sure you have a coach or an editor or a publisher that's worked with lots of authors. We've worked with about 300. Um, so I would say at least 100 authors who have that result. And if you want someone, again, it's not me, but who can teach you how to write beautiful turns of phrase and get you that A from the English teacher in the sky, write, work with somebody who's worked with, you know, at least 100 writers who have won a significant critical award for their beautiful writing. And they're different things, not good or bad, but knowing what the outcome you want from the book is, that's what I would say is the first step. And that's perfect. So you guys, this is Dr. Angela Loria with the Author Incubator. If you have a book that you are considering putting out in the world, you need to talk to Angela. And if you have any questions about it, your chicken, talk to me. And then I'll have you talk to Angela. I think, did Robin give you a link? To throw up? I don't know if you could throw up. Well, I went ahead and put a link up that I know goes to the application process. Great. So go fill out the application. Talk to Angela. Put my name in there because if you're referred by one of her published best-selling authors, it gets you to the top of the list, right? Exactly. Because Angela's pretty booked, but um, put my I name in the application good. and you will get some attention. Especially if I know your peeps are usually brick and steel peeps too, so they really go to the top of the list. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Angela, thank you so much. It's been so much fun to have you here on your digital book tour. I know, right? Facebook right? Live book tour. I don't know if anybody's done that before, but I think I just invented a new medium. I think it's fabulous. I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, I hope everybody has enjoyed this today. If you have any other questions after we're done, Go ahead and throw them in the comments down here and we'll get answers back to you. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So thank you, Angela. And thank all of you for showing up live today with us. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.